And, uh, well, it's interview time now. Attempts by the U.S. media to use the Freedom of Information Act to find out which banks received federal loans during the financial crisis have been blocked. Let's now cross to our Washington studio where RT's Aliona Minkowski is with legal analyst Nicole Cardell to find out where the law stands on this. Hello to you, Aliona. So, you're welcome. Thank you. Well, that's right. At a time of financial crisis in the U.S., after a nearly $800 billion stimulus package was passed earlier this year, and after a $700 billion bailout was passed in 2008 under the Bush administration, Americans are wanting to know where is all that money going. Already, lawmakers are trying to pass a bill that would ask for an audit of the Federal Reserve. But there are some media outlets out there trying to take a different route. They're filing lawsuits under the Freedom of Information Act. The bad news, just last week, one of these lawsuits in which they tried to find out which banks were given bailouts and how much money they got was rejected. So a loss for transparency when a lot of Americans want to see it most. So why is this happening and is all hope lost? Here to discuss that with me is Nicole Cardell, RT's legal analyst. Thank you for being with us today. So Nicole, tell me, why is this going on? What's with all the secrecy? Yeah, well, the justification that you'll hear both from the Fed that, you, that uh, was worked out through the pleadings in the various cases by these media outlets, as well as from the judge in the decision that just came down last week, was that they don't want to deter borrowers from uh, uh, financial institutions from borrowing uh, at the discount window at the Fed. And they don't want to uh, reveal information that might result in panic and withdrawals from, uh, from people because they're concerned about what's actually going on. Now, in reality, I mean, if that's the, the truth, that's their justification, but in reality, what actually is going on, uh, I guess you could posit that uh, maybe um, the Fed doesn't fully know themselves. Uh, Bernanke, when he was uh, appeared before or for congressional hearings a couple of weeks ago, wasn't able to give any detail about where half a trillion dollars exactly went. Um, the little bit more skeptical side of me wonders, do you think that there might be some corruption going on there? I mean, how can the chairman of the Federal Reserve have no idea where some of this money went? Yeah. Well, you know, I think the, the skeptical side of me wonders that very thing because uh, there's, you know, a lot of possibilities that what happens is that for those that are politically well connected, they can receive a real windfall um, if they're the first ones in line to be getting, um, you know, massive amount of money that are being printed out at the Fed. But what's the legal reasoning behind the rejection of this lawsuit that's already been filed under the Freedom of Information Act? It's supposed to be free. Yeah, well, let me little, do a little bit of back check. So what happened with these different media outlets is that they had uh, submitted requests uh, from the Fed to get uh, very specific amounts of information on, on the various uh, uh, money that was lent out. Um, between 2007 and 2008, those requests were denied by the Federal Reserve Board, and they were arguing that um, that information was exempted. There's nine enumerated exemptions under the Act where a government agency wouldn't be required to uh, submit that information. So these media outlets went and they um, uh, sought relief from the federal courts. Uh, two cases are still pending, but the, the case that was just denied last week, the justification was, look, this, is, um, this material is exempt uh, through uh, trade secrecy laws uh, and such, or through trade secrecy. Amazing, because you think this is a time, really, when Americans deserve to know where all this money goes at a time of crisis like this. Is there anything else that can be done? I mean, what are the next steps, or do the other two pending cases you think have a chance of actually winning? I have a little bit of hope with one of the other cases that's pending before actually the same court, not the same judge, but the same court as, out of Southern District of New York. That judge had requested a little bit more information on... Uh, uh, from both uh, both sides of the case on what it means to be an agency because that's one of the arguments that the Fed had, had brought back of why they were exempted is that the banks like the the, uh, the Bank of New York um, was not exact wasn't a government agency and that's why it was ex they were exempted from having to disclose any of that information so that judge might come out a little bit different however the the, the better thing and the better thing we've got in the works right now which is before Congress is that and the Fed Act which or out of the Fed Act sorry HR uh, 1207 before the House and I think it's S602 before the Senate. There's a lot of co-sponsors, and that will allow us, um, or that will um, allow us to, to see more of what's going on behind through, through an audit of the Fed. How does that differ, really, when we talk about people that are questioning the law and judges that are rejecting these cases 
and then lawmakers trying to pass a law that would allow for this to happen. I mean, where does that break down? Well, the nice thing is that uh, Congress is actually doing something that they ought to be doing, is taking a proactive stance uh, in, in what goes on with, with our currency. Frankly, it's Congress that is constitutionally required to be the one that, are, that is a, to have oversight of, uh, of currency uh, under Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. So it might be left up to the Congress at this point. Well, we'll see how things keep going and keep you updated. Back to you over there in Moscow. All right, Eliana, thank you very much. We're looking forward to it.